Hey guys, how's it going? This is John with GameStreet81.com. This episode, I'll be reviewing Wacky World's Creativity Studio for the Sega Genesis. It came out in 1994. I don't believe this came out for the Mega Drive. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think it came out for the PAL consoles either. Uh, this is strictly for North American uh, Genesis consoles. What's interesting about this cartridge and the reason I want to do a review on this game is that it utilizes a very interesting peripheral for the Genesis. There weren't many peripherals that came out, first of all, for the Genesis, but this one is kind of unique. It's the Mega Mouse. Uh, and it's basically a copy or, or Sega's answer to Super Nintendo's mouse, which a lot of us know for Mario Paint, which is one of the best games for the system, in my personal opinion. I love the game. However, this is actually a sequel to a game called Art Alive, uh, which came out a year before Mario Paint, although I don't believe that used the mouse. That just used a controller. This game can actually use a controller as well. It's part of what they call the Sega Club series of games. This is the first one they released as part of that, that club. I think Echo Jr. was another game part of that club. Uh, gear for a younger audience. The whole idea is there's, there's six worlds, there's stickers that you're supposed to collect, put into the world, create dioramas, so to speak. So I'm going to show you the gameplay. Uh, this is technically uh, considered a Sonic the Hedgehog game. It's got Sonic on the cover. In fact, it's got Echo the Dolphin on the cover as well. And Toe Jam and Earl actually appear in this game as well, which is kind of interesting. So uh, let me know what you guys think of this game. Let me know if you actually had a Mega Mouse. It seemed like Sega always had an answer for, for Nintendo's product. For example, when Nintendo released the Super Scope 6, the Sega's answer was the Menacer, which looked very, very similar, handled very the same as well. So without any further ado, we'll take a closer to the game, and I'll share my final thoughts about the game towards the end of the video. Thanks for watching. So here's the intro, and graphically it looks very similar to Toe Jam and Earl, uh, graphically anyway, and they do appear in the game as I mentioned before. I love that, those series of games, by the way. Totally both, totally different versions of the game, too, for the Genesis. But anyway, uh, here are the, the worlds. Uh, there's six of them, different themes. We'll check out the Haunted House one. This might freak you out a little bit. Just joking, of course, but uh, the mouse actually is very responsive in this game. Very, very surprised. Obviously, you want to use a flat surface when you're using the mouse because it uses a rollerball. Um, there's different options here. That's to exit, of course. Uh, but there's various options as far as uh, you know, sound design, music. You can go in and, and change the, the theme song. Uh, it's kind of cool how there's 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 Earl or Toe Jam, one of the characters. But you can move things around, kind of the music order, stuff like that. Uh, it took me a while to to kind of understand the, the controls and stuff, or the, the what to do in the game because. I don't have an instruction manual, but it's pretty self-explanatory uh, as far as these options. But here are the different stickers, what they call stickers. You can move around, uh, change things how you want it. You can make them animated. You can you know, kind of build your, your scene, so to speak. Here, here let's click on uh, this bird. You can move him around and he flies when you move him. It's kind of funny. You can change the speed of things as well. These are different options here. Uh, this is to change the color of the sprite or that image so I can, you know, add some hint of like violet to the bird if I want to, some shades of blue if I like, you know, so that's kind of cool. And you can do that with any sticker. So it'd make it kind of unique. You can do the same thing with a skull here and, and you know, add a little skin color there, a little salmon color. You can also do uh, stuff by making more animated, animated as well. Here's another world. Uh, this is kind of a, I don't know, Jurassic World looks like, kind of weird, but here is, Another world that I want to show you. Uh, it's a kingdom world, looks like, and you move things around. Let's check out. The, here's the different op things you can add to stickers, and here's a king, and you can put them whatever. You can put them on top of the castle if you like, kind of randomly. <laughs> and you can kind of flip through this book as well, and it shows you different things you can add. And you can add things from other worlds to this world as well, which, if that makes sense. Here's the Toe Jam and Earl world. Uh, things are already moving around. You can add this surfer guy which I've added he's flying around like crazy and uh, they, they fly randomly uh, here's like a little I don't know, station space station and if you click on this particular cursor right here that makes it animated so these things are already moving around but they're just dancing here's, here's the, the last world I'm gonna show you this is kind of a baby's world <laughs> you can add uh, random things I don't know why they have the bear flying around but it's kind of random you know, but if I want to make click this around, I can make a move. But yeah, that's pretty much the, the essence of the game, obviously uh, geared towards kids. So what do I think about Wacky Worlds for the Sega Genesis? Clearly, it's geared for kids, there's no doubt. As an adult, I'm not going to go back and play it very much. It's the replay value isn't good for an adult. However, as a kid, especially for my kids, when they grow up, I'm going to introduce them to this game when they get older, and they'll probably really enjoy it. So I think Sega was smart to release this game. 
And it's really too bad. I'm just shocked that they didn't take advantage of the Mega Mouse because honestly, the, it functioned very, very well. Uh, there could have been some great games for the Sega Genesis that used the Mega Mouse. And it's just it's too bad that the peripheral just kind of came and went uh, so quickly. I didn't even know there was a mouse for the Sega Genesis until I found this thing in the wild, to be quite honest with you. So uh, it's, it's, it's really too bad. But overall, it's, it's not a bad game for kids. Um, and I'm really shocked also that Nintendo didn't take more advantage of the Super Nintendo mouse. I think that's a really cool peripheral. Seriously, Sega's Mega Mouse actually handled better than the Super Nintendo mouse does. So uh, again, it's just, it's just amazing that they didn't really take advantage of that fact. Well guys, let me know what you guys think of the game. Leave a comment below if you guys played it before. What are your thoughts? What other games should have been used with the mouse? Let me know. Uh, also guys, if you want to stay in touch, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as my website, gamestready1.com. I'll put links below. And guys, I do have shirts now available. Just to let you know if you're interested. Shirts are now available. I'll put links below as well in case you guys would like to check it out. And that helps the show tremendously. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys soon. Take care and game on.